safe work practices, hazardous substances and dangerous goods. So some working environments involve the use of materials that can be toxic or dangerous for humans who need to be interacting with them. These materials may be harmful through causing burns when coming into contact with a person's skins or may be poisonous when the particles are breathed in by an individual. Certain materials may also only become dangerous or volatile when they come in contact with specific other materials or specific elements, such as flammable liquids. So liquid, if that comes in contact with fire, then we've got our danger. So we need to be aware of what the hazardous substances are in our environment. Now, in relation to hazardous substances, these are kind of the key things we need to know in order to be sure that we're safe. And there's in a number of areas. So we first need to know how to handle them. How do we use these materials safely? when we actually use them, okay, what's the correct way to apply them to whatever we're doing? So what practices do I need to follow, okay, when using them for my specific job task? I need to be aware of labeling. I need to read the labeling on the containers that have these hazards inside them, okay? I need to be aware of what the specific hazards are, and that th could be through traditional signage. Okay, and I've got some displayed there. Okay, or actually reading what the compound is made of on the labeling so I know what's inside this material and then what could be the dangers associated with it. And I would be trained in this and knowing that there these things equal a dangerous object. Okay, I need to be aware in transport, okay, because some of them when dropped might be in the container breaks, okay, can lead to a, a, a specific danger occurring within the environment. So I need to make sure I know how to transport these things safely and then when I get to my destination, I put them away safely, what storage it needs to go into. And usually that's into a cupboard that has the actual signage on it, uh, explaining the hazards of the items stored inside that cupboard. And obviously the cupboard itself needs to have appropriate labeling and space, okay, for me to put all these hazardous substances inside. And then finally is disposal. If we no longer need the substance, how do I get rid of it safely? Okay, it's not as simple as just throwing the bin. I might have to put it in a specific type of waste uh, bin that gets taken by uh, someone that's not the regular type of garbage disposal. Okay, or it could be I have to go about disposing it myself in a very particular way so that it's obviously nullified the hazard associated with that substance. All right. So there are all the elements kind of relate to hazardous substances. Now, obviously, it's a lot to know. Okay. And um, how do I know what to do? It, it'd be a lot for me to remember, especially if I'm using in an environment, lots of different types of hazardous substances. So for this reason, in sp workplaces, we need to have a specific documentation known as safety data sheets. Okay, now these safety data sheets provide an information about what is in a hazard or toxic compound within specific workplace environments. So it's where the information is stored about all the, my specific compounds and it can be referred to by workers in the environment so they can get assistance with all those aforementioned uh, things such as handling, application and, and how to transport these items. Okay, the SDS is split into a number of sections. Okay, and they provide information about all the different types of chemicals in our environment. So these will be things such as how to actually identify the hazardous material. So how do I know that object over there is dangerous? What will kind of signify it to me? What is the composition or chemicals that actually make up the substance? And that said, that should be on the labeling as well. Okay, but obviously I can refer to it as well in the SDS. In the case that the substance is accidentally released, okay, what should I do for cleaning or containment? Now, I could clean, be able to clean up myself, but some substances I mightn't be able to clean up myself. Okay, um, I might need to contact a third party or an external organization to help with that clean to ensure that the environment is safe. Okay, and it could be as well that when cleaning equipment, I'm not just using water and soap. Okay, that I would traditionally use, I might need to use a specific blend in order to soak up that equipment. Okay, because water doesn't mix with things such as oils. Okay, or some elements could cause the hazard to turn dangerous. So I've got to be very aware of what I do if I accidentally release and attempt to clean a thing. Okay, so once again, I could also get in contact with third parties, even if it's just for a consultation and they tell us how to clean something appropriately. All right, 
I, we need to know first aid procedures, and that would be in the SDS. Okay, what to do to support an individual who may have been exposed and it's caused an injury. It's caused the burn, they've breathed it in. Okay, what is the actual procedure for it? And it would be something like, well, yeah, I probably have to contact emergency services. Okay, and you can see that in the next point. Okay, who do I contact for support? So it would be an ambulance would be given, but it could also be as well, people for guidance as well and how to support what to do as well who in the workplace do we contact as well for support because they're more immediately available. Who do I get there while waiting for emergency services to arrive? But it could also be uh, supported through specific first aid, how to dress the wound in the meantime, what uh, actual medicinal uh, substances could I put on the wound, uh, okay, to help the person get past and support them, okay, when they have been exposed to a dangerous material. And then hopefully the ambulance will arrive and they can be attended to as well. But as you can see here, there is so much information in safety data sheets. And that's because there are so many different types of chemicals that need to be managed in many different types of ways. So all workplaces should have safety data sheets within them talking about or having information about all the different compounds that exist within the workplace environment in order to support employees who work with them. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of hazardous substances and dangerous goods how we have so many of them in our environments, what are the sources of information we can refer to, how do we actually manage them within our environment, and what to refer to in the case that an incident does occur, uh, what strategies we follow, that of the SDS, that we'll follow that when understanding them, working them, and then managing incidents relating to them in order to keep people safe and support them if an incident does occur.